So uh, in this tutorial, we are going to solve some questions under Newton's laws of motion. I have a number of questions under Newton's laws of motion for this tutorial sheet. So <clears throat> just follow me, I will be able to solve almost all of them and I will be able to, to, to post the videos. So the first question is saying, a bag of cement uh, of weight 3.5 Newton hangs from three wires as suggested in the figure one two of the wire makes an angle of 60 degrees and 25 degrees with the horizontal if the system is in equilibrium find the tension t1 t2 and t3 of, uh, in the wire now here <clears throat> i'm going to explain the concept of static equilibrium when something is at equilibrium meaning the summation of all the forces in x direction, when you add them, they should give you zero. And the summation of all the forces in y direction, when you add them, they should give you zero. That is the condition of static equilibrium. Okay? Something is at equilibrium. It's not moving. Now, the diagram which we, ha we, we, have be uh, we have been given here, and the question, the interesting question which we have right now, is demanding us to find T1, T2, and T T3. Now, I'm going to uh, divide this into three, two parts, okay? So, I'm going to cut here. We have been told that the weight of this bag, it is basically 325 newtons. So, I'm going to get this as the weight of the bag, as the bag, meaning the weight is there, 25. Then there is tension, which is T3. That is the first part. So, Avo. I've cut for the first part, I'm going to cut there. The second part, I'm going to get this part. Okay? So, the second part, I'm going to be dealing with this. And this here, then I'll go there. So, I'll be dealing with T3, T1, well, that's T2, and T, uh, T1. Now, one thing, guys, you should know is that when we're talking about these angles, this part here, it makes Z. Meaning that this angle here is basically the same as the angle which is going to be there. So, I'm going to get that angle to be here as theta 2. Then this part here, it will be the same. It will be as theta 1. But remember, it is Z, so this is going to be theta 1. But remember, one thing we have to remember is that this is T1. It's a vector, so you have got a vector which is going in that direction as T. Then this one, we have now Tx and Ty. So even this one is going to be T2x. This will be T2y. This will be T1x. This will be T2y. Done. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is um, I'm going now to start now uh, to solve for T3. T3 is going to be easy because I know that using just the bag, I'll be able to find T3, of which I can just do direct. It's going to give me, I'll say, the summation of forces in Y direction. What do we have? We have got T3 pointing upward, carrying positive minus the weight force which is 325 newtons so I'll just say 325 but we say that the condition for this object to be at equilibrium the summation of the forces has to be zero so this will be replaced with zero t3 minus 325 shift 325 to the other side it will be 325 to be equal to 3 t3 meaning that my t3 is basically 325. Now that I have my T3, it will be easy for me to find T1 and T2. So I'll get rid of this. So I'll start with the forces in X direction. The summation of all the forces in X direction, when I add them, they should give me zero. So I have got T2 pointing, it is going in this direction, pointing positive X axis, minus, because this is pointing to the negative side, I'll say this is T2, T1x. But the summation is zero. So this 
should be replaced by zero. Now, according to Sokatoa, or if I take you back to vectors, tx is t sine theta. So this is going to be t2 is cos, sorry. I have this. Let me just take you back a bit. So I have t, this is theta, and this is tx, this is ty. So it's going to be, this ty is going to be opposite using Sokatoa. So it is t sine theta. So meaning x is t cos theta. So it is t2 cos, which theta are we talking about? Theta 2. Okay. Minus, I'll say t1 cos theta 1. Now I can plug in the values or I can shift t1 to the other side. So it will be t1. But what is theta 1? Theta 1 we've been told that is kist. I'll put 60 degrees to be equal to t2 cos 25 degrees. Now what I'm going to do, I'll leave this one here. Or if I want, I'll find what cos 60 is. So what is cos 60? 0.5. So I'll say t1 times 0.5 to be equal to what is cost 25? 0 0.9, 0 0.91. So T2 times 0 0.91. Now I can, at this point, I'll just leave it here. I'll call this equation 1 because I don't know T1, I don't know T2. Okay? Let's go ahead and also talk about the summation of forces in y direction. So I can put this equation just on top here. Oh, I'm not supposed to, shoot, to push this, but this equation. Okay, let me just rewrite it on top. So we're saying we have t1 times 0 0.5 to be equal to t2 times 0 0.91. Like that. So that is my first equation. I will write that as in equation 1. Let's go ahead and also talk about the summation of forces in y direction. So the sum summation of forces in y direction, what force do we have in y direction? In y direction, I've got T. This is So now, you are following this, guys. This vector is going like this. So this y is also going like that. So I'm following the arrow, so meaning that is pointing to positive y-axis. Same applies to that. The only guy going to the negative y-axis is T3. So T, T1 and T2, they will be pointing, they are pointing upward, they are going to carry positive. So I'll say, this is T1. So T1, y, plus T2, y, then minus, because T3 is pointing down, minus T3. But according to the rules of um, equilibrium, the summation should be replaced by zero. So this will be zero. T1, it will be T sine theta 1 plus T2 sine theta 2 minus T3, we know it already, we is 325. Shift 325 to the other side is basically the same as writing it like this. T1 sin theta 1 is uh, 60 plus T2 sin theta 2 is, um, is what? Theta 2 is 25 to be equal to 325. What I've done, I've shifted this to the other side. It's going to be negative. With that negative, we'll cancel out. Or you can shift 325 to go to the other side. It's basically the same thing. Now, what is sin 60? <clears throat> so sin 60, 0 0.87. So I'll say T1 times 0 0.87 plus what is sin 25? Sin 25, 0 0.422. So I have T2, 0 0.4. Two, three, to be equal to 3.5. Now, I have got two unknown variables. I'll call this one as equation 2 again. So I can now get rid of this. So 
so what of shifting this just want to shift okay it will be impossible but I can do it like that I'll put it there and this one should come back here now <laughs> the remaining thing is to make one T as a subject of feminine the first equation I'll call this one as the equation 2 the first equation let's make t1 as a subject of formula so it will be t1 is equal to t2 times 0 0.91 divided by 0 0.5 so meaning my t1 is um, 0 0.91 times 0 0.5 so t2 times 1.82 Meaning, in the second equation where there is T1, replace it with T2 times 1.8. So I'll come here and say, here, where there is T1. So I'll replace that one with T2, 1.82. Okay. Then I put them in brackets, then times 0 0.8, 0 0.87 plus T2, 0 0.4. 3 is equal to 3.5 so now what I'm going to do I'll say 1.82 times 0 0.87 that is giving me 1 point it's giving me um, 1.583 for t2 now plus 0 0.423 t2 to be equal to 3.5 so if we add this 1.5832 plus 0 0.423 uh, it's giving me 2 so I have 2 t2 to be equal to 3.25 divided by 2 even here I divided by 2 so these will go and I'll end up having T2 to be equal to 3.25 divided by 2 that is 162 so 162.5 being my answer 42 so now I want to find the remaining t which is t1 remember we had to make t1 as a subject of formula here just plug in the values using the same common formula so we have t1 so t2 is 162.5 then 1.82 So it will be uh, 162.5 times 1.87. So <clears throat> what are we getting? So now, uh, let me just redo it. We are saying 162.5 times 1.82. 1.82. Two ninety five. Two ninety five point eight newtons. Now I have my T one, I have my T two, and I have my T three. So this is how you can solve this question. Now, this question is very interesting. In the fact that um, you need to understand the concept of uh, static equilibrium because just using the concept of Newton's laws of motion is going to be hard for you, but the way I've explained it, you need to remember two things. Static equilibrium states that the summation of all the forces in x direction is zero, and the summation of forces in y direction is zero. Then start working around with the forces in x first, and also forces in y. Sometimes you're going to come across a, a problem where it requires you just to, to have just one thing without you dismantling them into two. Now here, I had to do this because I might have got t in between. So that's why I had to separate into two. Okay? So that is it for 
the first question which is the most interesting one I think so far okay so now uh, you can also access the remaining questions on our website uh, if you are already registered then it's easy you can just go back on our website then you'll be able to find all the series of the videos for this tutorial sheet and if you want to register with us just go back to our website or check the link in the description you are going to find the website and you'll be able to see our 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 videos so in case you want to get in touch with me you can get in touch with me using this number plus two six zero seven six seven seven two seven two then nine nine then two seven if you're not be able, if you're not going to be able to f uh, to register using the link in the description okay thank you so we have got question two which is saying a box of mass m to be equal to 10 kg is pulled by an attached cord along a horizontal smooth which is frictionless surface of the uh, of a table the force exerted is fp which is 40 newtons at an angle of 30 degrees as shown in the figure below now the question is we want to find the acceleration okay so how do we tend to find the acceleration then the second question is asking us to find the upward the magnitude of the upward normal force exerted by the table so now for us to find the acceleration the summation of forces this object is moving in x direction the only force that is making the object to move it is the applied force but which applied force now this object or this force has been applied at an angle when the force has been applied at an angle so since this object is moving in x direction i'm going to get the force which is what the the component of the force which is the x component so this force which you have here we expect to have the fp x then we also expect to have the fp y but in this case this object is moving in y in x direction so that's why i'm going to only focus on x so i'm going to say the only force which is making the object to move is the uh, fpx but in x direction using sokatoa i'm going to replace that one with the fp cos theta so since the object is moving you replace this the net force which mass times acceleration so mass times acceleration this is fp cos cos theta of which the theta is that divide both sides by m m a will be equal to fp cos theta divided by m now i can plug in the values so uh, fp which is the force is 40 cos the theta is 30 divided by the m which is the mass which is 10 so if i do 40 cos 30 then i divide this by 10 giving me 3.46 meters per second squared that is my acceleration in this case another question here is we need to find the normal force okay now we can clearly see that uh, the normal force is perpendicular to the surface so i'll have my normal force here and the force which is uh, in the same line as normal force is weight force okay the force that the object is exerting on the surface that is what eh? the norm, uh, the weight force so to find the normal force since it is in y direction i'll say the summation of forces in y direction we have got eh? the forces that are pointing upward we have got two fpy and normal force so they will carry positive we'll say the normal force plus fpy then minus since this guy is pointing downward i'll say minus the weight force of which we know that the weight force before we do that this object is not moving in y direction therefore this net force is zero so it will be replaced by zero n plus fp is fp sine theta because it is at an angle minus what is uh, weight force weight force is just mg now I'll shift this to the other side meaning 
or I can shift okay I'm going to shift M G then N uh, not N because I want to find N I will shift um, FP sine theta to be equal to the normal force now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the, the figures the mass is 10 G is 9.8 the FP is 40 sine 30 that would be my normal force so this is going to give me 98 minus 40 sine 30 sine 30 is 0 0.5 so 40 sine 30 should be 20 to be equal to the normal force so 20 98 minus 20 is 78 so we we'll have 78 newtons as my upward normal force so now you realize that if i add the normal force and the fpy i should i should get the the weight force it should be the same so if i add 78 plus 90 or 20 it should be 98 so that the forces in y direction and x direction should be the same because the object is just moving in x direction so that is it for this question now I also have question 3 which is saying two boxes are connected by a lightweight which is massless cord and are resting on a smooth which is frictionless table the masses are MA to be 10 kg MB to be 12 kg a horizontal force which is FP to be equal to 40 newtons is applied to MA calculate part A the acceleration part B the tension so the tension they're talking about the um, the tension of this rope now this is what we call um, we are talking about the tension force or in or is, is this this topic is under tension force the one we are solving right now so what is happening here is um, you, we need first to identify what is making the whole system to move okay so the only force that is making the system to move it is basically the applied force which is FP only meaning that the summation of all the forces in x direction the force that is making the system to move it is fp since the object is moving and we have got two objects m1 and m2 i need to add the masses so it has to be m a plus mb then times the acceleration being equal to fp is 40 divide both sides by m a plus m b even here by MA plus MB these will cancel acceleration will be equal to 40 divided by MA is 12 that one is 10 so we have 40 divided by 22 acceleration will be equal to I will say 40 divided by 22 that is 1.82 that is my acceleration so you know this is basically the simple simplest thing whereby we have not been given the the, um, the friction force so that's why we are just doing it direct but there are some questions where I was solving the same concept but there is tension there is friction force you can check them out I explained everything what you're supposed to do when there's friction force with and without friction force so you can just go on our website there's a video under tension force where I explained everything on this topic with or without friction because sometimes they can give you a question which involves friction and it's going to be a bit different with the concept which I've used here the next question they're asking us to find the tension now tension I'm going to use two methods I'm going to use but I'm going to have the same answer if I want I can only use MB okay so if I want it to if I'm only happen to get just MB which is 12 kgs the only force which is applying now it is the tension force therefore what I'm going to do I'm going to say the summation of the forces in x direction we only have the tension force so the 
the net force will be replaced by m b times acceleration to be equal to the tension force so m b is 12 acceleration is 1.82 being equal to the tension force so 12 times 1.82 is going to be 21 so the tension is 21.84 now, one thing I want you to know is that even if I've used this method, even if I used, I've used MB, I can also use MA and I'll be able to get the same answer. Let's see. Now, if I use MA, the applied force is that one, but there's another force which is opposing motion in this case, that is tension force. So tension force in that case is going to be acting there. So the summation of forces in X direction, I've got FP, which is applying minus T. So this will be replaced by MA times times acceleration, which is then FP is 40 minus the tension force. I'll shift the tension force to come here, MA to come there. Let's plug in the values we see. 40 minus my, A, my uh, mass is 10, my acceleration is 1.82 so let's see tension force will be 40 minus I'll have 10 times 1.82 18.2 so if I do 40 minus 18.2 I should be able to get the same answer, which is 21.8. So you choose which one to use. Have you seen here I've gotten 21.8 here to 21.84. If you run it off, that one is going to be 21.8 as well. So that is it for this question. Okay.